After a 25-year hiatus, the TV show Twin Peaks is back. To celebrate that, we're going to be recreating a cocktail from the show called the Black Yukon Sucker Punch. Let's take a look. Sid, can you fix this up with three Black Yukon Sucker Punches? Yes, Your Honor. What's the temperature of the town? Uh, they want a trial or a lynching? They want the right man brought to justice. Mm. Well, they don't need a circus. And this poor bastard, he seems to be a heady cabbage. Thoughts, Cooper? I feel the killer will eventually be apprehended. You have to watch these. They sneak up on you. Now, there is no official recipe for the Black Yukon Sucker Punch, but we can be pretty confident that it's some kind of twist on an Irish coffee. It's got black in the name, they're drinking it during the daytime, and if we look at the bar at the beginning of the scene, we can see this pot of black coffee. And we've got our whiskey right here, but to get that blue foam on top, my best guess is that they took some blue curacao right here, mixed it with some egg white in this dish, and put it in the blender, which we do hear earlier in the scene. All right, so this had me wondering, will it blend? Let's add two egg whites to that blender. We're gonna fire it up on high, let it go for about 30 seconds, and then we're gonna add some blue curacao directly into the top. We're gonna add two ounces here. The blue curacao does its job and the egg whites turn blue. It's actually quite a nice color, but the consistency is key. So what we notice is when we pour this out, it's actually already separated. And it's a little too loose to actually act as that foam that's gonna sit on top. It would just incorporate all the way into the drink. No good. Let's try a different approach here. We're gonna get three egg whites into a bowl and use one of these egg beaters to get something called stiff peaks. No stiff peaks yet. All right, keep beating. Stiff peaks, stiff peaks, no stiff peaks. Oof. All right, I'm really not the culinary expert here, guys, but I uh, think I got a guy in New York who can help us out. Hey, what's up, guys, and welcome back to Binging with Babish, where this week we are taking Craig... Oh, my God, where did you come from? Don't worry about that. But these egg whites are giving me a lot of trouble. Can you teach me how to beat them into stiff peaks? Oh, well, sure. Uh, you want to beat egg whites with a hand mixer because you want to expose it to as much air as possible so you can incorporate as much air as possible and create a stable foam. You want to start off by making sure your whipping vessel is large enough and just beat on high speed for a few minutes or until you reach a nice, stable, stiff egg white foam. You could also do this in a stand mixer with the whisk attachment or even by hand if you're feeling really ambitious. Well, I'm on the clock, so I'm just going to take yours if you don't mind, Andrew. Man, I'm jealous of his beard. Okay, three egg whites beaten to stiff peaks. Check. To that, we're going to add one fourth cup of sugar and continue to beat that until it takes on a sort of marshmallow fluff consistency like this. So put the egg whites aside and grab yourself another clean bowl. To that, add one whole cup of heavy whipping cream. Start whipping the heavy cream, realize you're getting cream all over your signature black button down, and then realize you haven't washed this thing in four episodes anyway, so it's probably fine. Smash cut a few minutes later, and we've got our whipped cream. Beautiful. To that, we're gonna add 1 4th teaspoon of salt and 1 teaspoon of vanilla extract. Now we're going to slowly add our blue curacao to the mix to prevent the cream from breaking and curdling. So add two ounces and use your beater to combine it in, then add two more ounces and finish the job. Now we're gonna combine the two ingredients by folding the egg whites into the whipped cream. The folding is key because that gentle technique will maintain a lot of the aeration in both. The final product is light, fluffy, and delicious. You can cover that and keep it in the fridge. All right, let's get our coffee going. We're gonna use the pour over method of coffee here. So take about 20 grams of your favorite coffee beans and grind them up. You want this to be about the coarseness of sea salt. Grab your paper filter and place it inside your ceramic dripper. We're gonna then boil some water and pour the water over the paper to get rid of that papery taste. This is also gonna warm your glass at the bottom. Cue the overhead camera angle and dump in the coffee grounds. The water should be about 30 seconds off boil when you pour it over the coffee. 
you'll immediately notice the coffee swell and bubble as the carbon dioxide escapes. This is known as the bloom. This careful attention to detail in the pour over method typically results in a bolder and cleaner cup of coffee compared to the traditional drip method. Once that initial swelling stops, pour the water in a circular motion across the surface of the coffee, making sure that the grounds are never exposed to air until the brew is finished. This should make about 12 ounces, enough for two drinks. And there's our coffee. Black as midnight on a moonless night. Cooper would prefer we just stop here. But instead, we're gonna add our booze. Add two ounces of your whiskey to a Collins glass. Then add the coffee, about six ounces. And you want it to come about halfway up the glass. And we're gonna finish the drink by topping it with our blue boozy foam. We use the spoon so we can just gently place that foam on top of the coffee and not have it mix too much with it. We want that nice color contrast between the dark coffee and the blue foam. Okay, that's looking pretty good. Let's see how we're gonna drink this though. The challenge I had with this foam is that it's pretty thick, and as I was trying to take my first sip, at some point the coffee broke through and smashed into my face. Maybe that's what Judge Sternwood meant when he said they sneak up on you. Either way, this drink is damn tasty, even if it stays with you for a while on your mustache. Not looking to drink that much coffee? Here's another option for you. Here we're gonna use the coffee beans for an infusion. So take a heaping scoop, about 20 grams of beans, put them into a mason jar, and then add in some sweet vermouth. I prefer the Carpano Antica brand for this. We're gonna add about six ounces to the jar that'll make about six drinks. Let it sit for about an hour and then strain out the coffee beans into another jar. And make sure to store it in the fridge if you're making it ahead of time. All right, let's mix it up. Take one ounce of that coffee-infused sweet vermouth, add two ounces of whiskey, and to get a subtle chocolatey flavor, we're gonna add one bar spoon of creme de cacao. Add some ice, and we're gonna stir for about 45 seconds to chill and dilute the drink. Then strain it into a glass. I picked this one up at Goodwill, but you could use a coupe glass, a rocks glass, whatever you want. And same as the last cocktail, we're gonna put a couple dollops of that blue foam right on top and smooth it out a little bit. All right, let's get my mustache in here for round two. It's actually a damn good cocktail. If you like a Manhattan, the chocolate and coffee additions play really nice here. So one of these is like an Irish coffee, the other is like a Manhattan. Both are strange yet pretty satisfying, just like the show. But now what the hell am I gonna do with all this blue foam? Maybe if I had some griddle cakes or something, I don't know. If you're still hungry for more Twin Peaks, definitely check out this video from Binging with Babish. He's gonna teach you how to make griddle cakes and ham from the show. And because we're both coffee junkies, we make a little bit more of the good stuff. And if you like watching deep voice torsos give instructional videos, I highly recommend subscribing to his channel.